boyhood gaze. The flats is what it was called. Frogs, toads, and rats lived there, and that is where I first laid eyes on them. It was a large wetland in the middle of the city, a forbidden destination. Mother often said, if I ever hear that you've been down there, you'll get the hiding of your life. What could possibly be more alluring to a young boy? <clears throat> Railroad tracks bordered the region and continued on clear across Canada with stops in between. It is the in-between around where I grew up that opens a time portal to cherish memories of bygone days. Trains continuously rumbled and rattled their way along before disappearing under the Terminal Avenue viaduct. Below the trestle was a quasi-holding yard where broken down boxcars came to rust away or be scavenged for parts. For young hooligans, it was quite a draw. We were told that odd people and hobos hung out there. The countless times we terrorized those old wrecks, we didn't want to see anyone or anything that fit the bill other than the railway workers, sporting red bandanas that dangled from overfilled coveralls and coupled with their gray-black striped caps, they would on occasion give a kid quite a fright if caught unawares. For the most part, they ignored us. Nevertheless, we kept a wary eye out for stranger-looking people. Less frightening were frequent sightings of rats and other vermin. Pigeons roosted high and out of sight in the bridge rafters while under them stopping too long could result in being hit by multiple bird droppings. Hats on, slingshots stuffed in back pockets, drawstring bags filled with marble steelies and rocks, we were ready for any opportunity to let shots fly. I lived within hearing distance of the tracks, and on stormy nights the locomotive's haunting whistles made me glad to be snuggled warm in my bed. Other times, moving boxcars with their shrieking protests dragged me with them into the wilds of poison sleep. On awakening, churlish dreams vanished like dew in the morning sun. You could hear a train coming from miles away. Every so often we'd run and place pennies on the rail lines and watch them get squashed or disappear into heavy metal wheels. While waiting for the event to take place, the air filled with cuss words, grand imaginings, and unfiltered hopes. It was great sport. More exciting was hopping a slow-moving freighter. Not everyone was up for it. Some kids had more sense. I did not fall into that category. Though the tracks were compelling, they were noisy, smelly, and came with more than a modicum of danger. It was the swampy area, <clears throat> filled with all sorts of exotic living things that put the awe in my sense of wonder. It was nothing to cobble together a raft of sorts and with a stout stick push yourself around the marsh. In doing so, invisible creatures whooshed away, leaving tiny wakes here and there. Startled fowl would suddenly fly up, squawking their displeasure. Sometimes, when venturing too close to nesting birds, winged warriors would aggressively dive bomb the intruder. During summer, the swamp was filled with dragonflies and hummingbirds. They hovered among the bulrushes and wildflowers. A myriad of other flying creatures lived there too, some with stinging bites. Life flourished and so did we. In deeper water, stealth gave way to a certain alertness. While rafting through the tall reeds, a host of unseen critters would silently scatter, leaving an eerie silence creating a kind of Saturday afternoon movie fear, where giant man-eating reptiles devoured unsuspecting victims. No one had ever seen such creatures, but local lore said they existed, which gave way to fanciful stories and accounts of near-death experiences. For safety, pocket knives were carried. The grandeur of a person's knife 
was directly related to one's own fear. Mine was large. Having read the Jungle Book, a man claw proved to be a good defense against the evil Shere Khan. I figured as a weapon it might also be effective against monster crocs, snakes, and other unknowns. The clear bits of murky water near the shore are where the pirate wars took place. A parade of foul language and empty threats accompanied every undertaking. Shouts of shiver me timbers and are there matey reverberated around the flats. Grand sort fights and shipboardings occurred. Walking the plank and taking it like a man was a rite of passage. There was lots of hooting and hollering. It was, after all, young boys at play. What once was is no more. The wetlands became a repository for questionable waste materials, which made way for apartment buildings and roads. The tracks disappeared, and I heard tell the old viaduct is to be torn down. Gone are the frogs and toads, but the rats are doing well. To me, it brings a, a touch of sadness to that once upon a time.